Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Fully Informed Trade or Fi Trade for short. Knowledge for everyone. My name is Alex, and I'm just going to go ahead and review some key stocks, talk about the overall markets, and just go over some key macro data. So, without any further delay, let's go ahead and review this key uh, data and these charts. All right, let's start by reviewing the dollar index. Last uh, last week, Thursday night, or very early Friday morning, I think I made the video at around like. I think it was uploaded at around 12 a.m. Um, Friday, maybe 1 a.m. Friday. So e either really, really early morning Friday or um, really, really late Thursday. What I basically went over is the dollar index and its eventual decline below the $76 level, mainly because of the fact that uh, we got huge amounts of inflation. The only thing that will ever stop this inflation is when the U.S. government gets out of war gets out of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan and it withdraws all of its troops from the Middle East in general and they just keep on bombing Libya that will save us so much money that will reduce government uh, deficit borrowing deficit spending another thing is is the permanent open market operations for as long as the Federal Reserve keeps pumping US dollars into the economy causing inflation this dollar index will continue going lower remember a falling dollar index resembles inflation so right now we're gonna see this continued trend in inflation and over the multi-year chart your only area of true support that I could see at this point now to uh, 75 or 76 dollar level wasn't able to hold is pretty much at the 72 dollar level which is a level that we saw back in 2008 July and uh, the next one is in 2008 uh, lows which was in March okay so you pretty much got levels in um, the the 71 72 dollar area so just keep that in mind and uh, always remember that when you're trading that the dollar index pretty much does determine the move the whole entire mo market movements and for as long as the dollar index keeps going lower and lower 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 the chances are the US stock markets will continue going higher and higher and higher regardless of what the crude oil markets do does which I will go over in further detail alright let's move on to the next chart which is the US dollar Japanese yen pair US dollar continues going higher uh, the, the main reason why the US dollar is uh, strengthening against the Japanese yen is because of government intervention amongst the G7 and it's no surprise Japan did weaken against all currency pairs whether it be the Japanese yen uh, Canadian dollar pair or the Japanese yen Australian dollar pair what's basically happening is the fact that people are just selling the Japanese yen indiscriminately uh, amongst the G7 members that in turn should make the Japanese yen weaker the corresponding currency pairs to those like the US dollar Japanese pair should go up so that being said US dollar is definitely stronger to the Japanese yen and I do believe this trend will persist as long as the G7 commitment to that continues alright let's move on to the next chart which is going to be the S&P 500 uh, SPY now basically what I'm going to show you here is an inverse head and shoulder you got the you got this head or more like this shoulder right here you got this shoulder right here and you got a head right there so basically this implies that the market should go higher and overall I will give you guys some tidbits as in uh, Alcoa which is the first company amongst the Dow components to report earnings is going to be start is going to start reporting earnings uh, on uh, April 11th 2011 so Pretty much, we're, we're going to have earnings in around 20 more days. Remember, at the start of earnings seasons, markets always tend to go up higher a bit. And right now, markets should continue this upwards trend into the 134 area eventually. So that being said, anticipate stronger markets in general and uh, trade in the direction of least resistance, which is upwards, which is basically pointing upwards and not downwards at this point. So you always want to trade to the upside now at this point. You could find short-term shorts and scalps, but if you're buying into, like, let's say, call options on certain stocks, you definitely want to buy the calls instead of the puts because right now the market sentiment is definitely bullish and not bearish. Issues coming out of Japan have abated for the meantime, and I will go over that later, later on in this video. Okay, the XAG USDO continues going higher. Silver continues going higher, partially because of the fact that the dollar index has continued going lower. I'm just going to go ahead and point that out to you guys right now. Dollar index has broken the $76 area, and because of that, you see this, this, you know, you see this huge downwards momentum. 
And this downwards momentum always translates into the silver going up in value. Silver continues to go up in value, like I mentioned to you guys before. If it breaks the 20-day moving average and it stays above it, you guys buy it and you guys hold on to it because it will result in profits. And that's exactly what has happened. Of course, if it, if it wasn't able to break above the 20-day moving average and you guys saw a continued reversal, then you guys would have shorted the, the silver market. But you didn't have to do that. You had to buy into it once you saw that confirmation above the 20-day moving average at my recommendation. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next chart, which is going to be the crude oils chart. Crude oil does have a quick bounce in the markets, mainly because of the fact that the U.S. and uh, Fran Fr the U.S., French, and British forces are bombing uh, different places in Libya. That might uh, cause a short-term um, that, that 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 may prevent oil supplies from reaching other countries. That whole entire fear hype has basically been factored into the markets at this point. However, it could go up even further if we have more issues coming out of the Middle East. Right now, I am neutral on oil. I don't want to go long or short it for the most part, mainly because of the fact that we don't know exactly what's going to happen out of the Middle East. And as of right now, you know, at first you see a quick, you know, price increase in oil. But like I'm saying, you know, some of this is pu pushed by the fact that the U.S. dollar has continued to weaken. That means that the crude oil should go up on top of the fact that we have issues in Libya persisting. So, you know, chances are the, the path of least resistance is probably going higher over the really long term, but over the medium term, only, you know, you can only guess what's going to happen to the crude oil market. All right, so basically, play it neutral. Look for short-term trades with some great poss with some great setups. But as for, you know, speculating it's really hard to say for the midterm if you wanted to take a month long trade you really couldn't tell at this point because it is playing around the 20 day moving average all right let's move on to the next chart which is las vegas sands las vegas sands seems like a great trade it has a lot of beta we have earnings season coming in earnings generally propel earn propel stocks the short-term downtrend that was caused by the japanese issues uh people being you know kind of scared of the fact that uh Stocks may have been overhyped. Well, this stock has been pushed down a bit too far. I do believe that we have some more room to the upside on this one. We do have a 20-day moving average. And because of that, I do believe we could go a little higher on this trade, maybe into the $50 level at least by earnings season. That gives you a good area of uh, profit right there, you know, because last time we went into earnings season, this stock has, you know, roared substantially higher. We may, we may actually retest. We may actually retest, uh, you know, these, these previous levels. Maybe we could go up to at least fifty dollars, and we might not be able to get back to you, you know, the fifty, you know, fifty-five dollars. But if we can at least get back to fifty dollars, that would resemble a huge amount of profit. And uh, you know, that's that's basically the idea here. Maybe maybe even forty-four dollars would be good enough for just about any trader, considering the fact that if we buy in now, we'd be buying in at around thirty-eight dollars. Moving on, let's look at the next chart, which I think has some great potential, which is AMD. AMD is facing a double topping pattern right now. And, uh, you know, after it pulls back a bit, it might try to retest it again. Once it confirms above this, uh, d this double topping pattern right here, we could assume that the market will go back up and into the, t the $9, $10 area. And, you know, the, the call premiums on AMD are very, very cheap. I mean, for the amount of beta that you get and the amount of theta that you get from it, this is probably one of the better plays in the options market right now. Call option would be preferable in AMD or a long position because there's a lot of beta. Remember, we're in earnings season right now. Earnings season comes by, stocks generally go up with it, and generally stocks on the NASDAQ, S&P 500, and Dow tend to follow the whole entire um, the whole entire earnings mood where people generally buy into earnings season. Moving on to that, let's look at the American International Group. We have a descending triangle right here, and once you break the, the this 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 line right here, once you break it, that generally means a positive indication of trend. If you break below the support level, of course, it means that the market should go substantially lower. However, we did break the angle on the triangle, and because of that, we do have more room to the upside. And you know, I do want to remind you guys that when when you trade these markets, you always got to keep in mind that earnings season are one of the was is actually going to be one of the main factors behind why a stock will go up. And in our case, it, it will benefit us a lot. We're we're also seeing. Um, the percent K are just about ready to break the percent D. That's also very positive for us personally because if it does, that's a confirmation of stochastics, oscillators, meaning that a lot of computer traded programs will buy into the stock just because it has broken over the percent K or the percent, yeah, basically the percent K has broken, over, broken the percent D and we could enter into the oversold area of 80. If we ever go back to the 80 oversold area, do note that we should be trading somewhere around 50 to $60 per share 
over the longer term. And this is the slow stochastics and not the fast st stochastics. So that being said, you know, I think we got some great opportunity here. So let's move on to the next chart, which is going to be the NVIDIA chart. NVIDIA chart has some great opportunities here. I do believe that this stock has been a bit oversold. We have been able to find some support on the gap area, the gap fill area, we, the bottom one and the, and the the bottom one, the top gap area. These areas are generally good areas of support. I do believe we will find support here and reverse to the upside. When reversing to the upside, do note that this stock could go back to the twenty dollar level easily. And the call options here sound great. I do anticipate, you know, maybe a nineteen dollar call option would be a pretty good idea. Remember, call options do have more risk but the returns are astronomical compared to just buying the stock alone. Another thing that I do want to point out that since we are in earnings season and the fact that it has most likely been able to find some support, Japan nuclear issues are a bit under control. I do believe Nvidia will be one of the type of stocks to go up the most in these coming weeks. Moving on, let's look at the MSCI Japan Index, ticker symbol EWJ. And uh, EWJ has some great opportunities. I do believe that stocks are a bit oversold right now. Some great call option opportunities in this market as well. If you want to buy into it, that's fine as long as you have a longer term mentality with Japan. However, I do believe that a short term call option could be a great thing as long as this upwards momentum continues on the Nikkei 225. All right, that does it for me for today. If you guys got anything out there, any questions, just be, be sure to leave a comment below my video. If you guys want to use the same charting software that I use, just check out the link below the video as well. I will have more for you in the coming weeks and months ahead, so please be sure to stay in tune. Take care, folks, and I'll see you guys next time.